Okay, uh, Lake Harriet and the Chalet Station. The first Lake Harriet Pavilion was hard up against the tracks. And we've got two pictures of it. I, there's never, I've never seen a photograph of it, but we have this drawing and this, so you'll see is from 1888. So, uh, and it says, take the motor. This was still the motor line running then. Uh, it was before electrification, which happened in 1891, I believe. And <clears throat> so this thing was right up against the tracks. The tracks would have been behind it. You can't see them. And now this is from 1891. And it is the same pavilion. It looks a little different in detail, but it's the same. And clearly you're viewing it from the lakeside. And so once again, um, and, and I should point out, as you will see in a subsequent photograph, that the tracks were down at the parkway level back then. Mm. Uh. That, that's one of the things that's, uh, I've never actually seen a map that, that properly shows it, but, uh, and uh, this is still the motor line. You see, it says at the bottom, trains are also run to Minaha Falls and Washburn Park. Uh, and those are the other two branches of the motor line. So anyway. Hey, hey, hey Aaron. Yeah. I wonder if a Sanborn map from that period, if they were done at that period, might show that, that sort of thing. It might. That would be something worth looking at. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the second pavilion. In the second pavilion, they moved it away from the tracks and down to the lake. Um, the first pavilion burned down, by the way. And so this thing actually goes out a little bit over the lake. And here you can see we're up at the Queen Avenue level, and you can see that the streetcars are down at the parkway level. So they were elevated later. I'm a little bit unclear exactly when that happened. So we have a couple of pictures. Here's another one. The water tower there. Yeah, well, you needed water. So I guess that's how they did it. And now I've shown you this next picture before, but uh, we're toggling to our left. And there's the water tower over here. And here's the little carousel. Hmm. Hmm. And we in know. A big, in a big double truck open car. I love right. it. And this is one of the open cars that they made out of one of the motor line open trailers. It was, uh, so it was actually started as a narrow gauge car. They electrified it. <clears throat> what year did you say these pictures were? This is this is 1891 right here. This is uh, all of these. All of these should be about 1891, 1892. Okay, so 1901, they built the little depot, and um, you can see the second pavilion is behind it. Mm. And of course, the depot, one of the things was it had diagonal glass in the windows, including in the side windows. Oh, wow. Now, you know, we never had a floor plan. We never had a plan of this thing. Gene Hickey was our member, the late Gene Hickey, who was an architect, and he's the one who designed it. We actually do have his drawings in our library of the depot as he designed it. Based on this photograph, right? Well, uh, we have three photographs of it. This is the second one, but yes, primarily based on this, certainly you can see that our, our Linden Hill sign is a real good replica. Right. And so this is a few years later, they put an awning on, they put some side steps on, uh, they put a little confectionery here. It says you good things to eat and drink on the sign. Was it true that he used the height of that guy standing as the, determine the size? I'm not following. Well, in other words, they didn't have any measurements, so we measured the- Oh, you mean, you mean back here? Yeah. Uh, probably so, sure. I'm sure he scaled it off of something. Okay, now in 1902, uh, the depot went up in 1901. In 1902, the second pavilion had, uh, the second pavilion had burned down. They seem to like to burn down. And so they built this big one. And you can see it's lo you're looking southwest. And so it's on the pilings out over the lake quite a bit of it. Mm. And so here's the little depot and you can see this, uh, the third pavilion there. And this one really shows the diagonal window panes. And, really and at that. some point, somebody added a fireplace in this thing. Because that's not in uh, oh, yeah. that's not in uh, either either of the original pictures. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there is a, a small flute in those first two pictures. Yeah. Right up above but the sign. Yeah, you know, it's behind. For, for yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Okay. That flu is still there on this picture. All right. So uh, in uh, this is a 1905 photo. And what, uh, besides showing the little depot, what's, uh, this is the only thing I've ever seen that shows the boarding shelter uh, down by the pedestrian underpass. And at, at some point there, and I don't have the exact year, I've got it, I can't remember it, is originally in the very beginning, when they had the big pavilion right alongside it, you got off and you had to go up and over on a bridge, on a pe pedestrian bridge into the pavilion, and then downstairs in the pavilion over to the lake. And um, that obviously was kind of time consuming and awkward. And so they built the pedestrian underpass um, at some point. And I think originally it was wood and later it was uh, uh, converted to the concrete. But this is the only picture I've ever seen of this waiting shed to go back to Minneapolis. So presumably, they did the end they elevated it because it's elevated here right they did the under underpass sort of together right and i think that i think that the elevation and uh all that happened at about the same time um yeah you know, they elevated the right of way and what i what i've never been able to figure out is did they shift it from down here to up there or is was the right of way always here and they simply filled it in and raised it. That's that's what I don't know. Aaron, did a car heading downtown stop twice then, once at the station and once at the waiting platform? Uh, yeah, and uh, my what I'm told is that this little station, that, that the boarding was always there for the lake uh, starting in the 1880s. This was added in 1901 as a convenience to the neighborhood. And uh, I actually have a movie footage taken like in the 1950s of, of uh, uh, people being let off at the underpass and then the car stopping again and letting off people at 42nd. Aaron, what's that other structure that's just uh, uh, south of 42nd Street? Yes, that one. I don't know, a shed of some kind, but it's behind a fence and it's on park board land. So I'm guessing it's some kind of a park board structure maybe just some, some storage building or something. And you'll notice there is a little fence along the right of way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, 1912, they built the chalet station and it was built uh, as a joint project of the park board. I think it was actually owned by the park board, but uh, Twin City Lines had, uh, had input. And uh, here you see the, uh, the third uh, pavilion with it. Now, um, you may have seen these. Joe Metzler, who's a, one of uh, one of our members, and he's an architect by trade, and he took an interest in the chalet station. And he said, he said, I want to try to recreate it on the computer. And at the time, he couldn't find any original drawings of it. And so he used photographs and measured it out and came pretty close. So we have a couple pictures of it. Is there actually an upper level there too? There is an upper level and I'll show you something about that. And then after he had done this in the Northwestern Architectural Archives over at the University of Minnesota, by God, he found the drawings mm. by Harry Wild Jones, the local architect. Mm. Now, I, this was about as contrasty as I could get them um, but here you are, whoops, here you are at 42nd Street looking north. It says so, looking north. And so uh, you can see that the platform is here and there's a, a stairs down into a basement, stairs to an upstairs. Um, and this one is a little bit confusing, but this is the platform side, you're looking east. Mm. So this would be like if you're standing on the tracks and you can see down here, this is a foundation, um, the concrete foundation uh, for the basement. And then the roof up here. Mm. Okay. And I think he cut away a little bit because obviously there's not a door facing there. I think mm -hmm. this is a cutaway view showing a door. 
Yeah, well, down in the corner, it says longitudinal section. Yeah. So it must be a straight cut almost through the, the center of the building. Kind of. Okay. Probably so. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Uh, <laughs> this is the ground. This is the ground floor track level. And uh, out here, this is the, this is the, the shed. So that uh, the waiting shed. So the tracks are up here. And uh, you can see it says waiting room, big waiting room. And it says balcony over it. Now, this says cigars and <coughs> it says fountain here. And I can't really read what that says, but apparently this is sort of the retail spaces here. Candy. Candy. Thank you. It does. And then we're all wrapping around it on the south side and the east side. Uh, this says screened porch. And I think uh, what this had, um, let's go back here. These big windows, which also have, go around the other side, go around the other side. This is all the screen porch. And so I believe these were removable windows that uh, were, were uh, were replaced with screens in the summertime. And then there's four doors going into the basement. So anyway, here's the basement. This is kind of interesting. You've got the furnace room and a fuel room, it says, and a storage room, the men's toilets, storage for the pavilion, which is interesting, the ladies' toilets, and here's the lockup right here. You know, we always talk about, oh, there's a, there was a cell for the park police. This is it. And it's even got a toilet in it. <laughs> and so this is the lakeside down here with four entrances on the lakeside to these places. And yeah, so, so we go ahead. Yeah, storage for a pavilion were probably the supplies for the the little uh, snack bar upstairs. Well, the pavilion refers to the great big thing that is out over the lake. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, and I think that's that's the deal. It's uh, you know if you had stuff that, and uh, who knows maybe you musicians put their uh, their instruments there or something. Who knows what it was used for? Right. But when they say pavilion, I think they're pretty specific that it's the big place. So now we don't have the drawing for the top floor, but this is uh, what he came up with. And a stairway coming up down here. So I'm not quite sure what the top floor did. Now- That doorway th that showed on the longitudinal section must be at the top of the stairs. I don't know why there'd be a doorway there, but see how that's kind of enclosed at the top of the stairs? Yeah. yeah. I think there was a doorway that led up to that mezzanine level. Right, plus remember, he didn't have the benefit of these plans when he did it. And so there's probably a disconnect. You know, this was him trying to figure it out without benefit of the plan. So um, I, I'm not sure I can balance them together. <laughs> okay, this postcard, which has a little bit wrong colors, but here is the uh, old depot, which after 1912 went down to the lake. And this is a 1910 or so vintage or about 1912 vintage postcard. So here, here's the old depot down there being used as a canoe rental office. And here's a view from that north. Now there's another building, but this is not the depot. The roof doesn't match. And um, the old depot kept its distinctive roof line all the way to the end. Okay, this is um, an illustration from the newspaper. And once again, I forgot to look up the date for this, but this is the, the creation of the pedestrian underpass or at least their, their idea of what it looked like. Um, and there's stairways, which implies going up to that waiting shelter. Um, clearly this is not accurate. I think this was just somebody at the newspaper trying to figure out what they were doing, but this was the first thing we see of the pedestrian underpass. This is the only photo I have ever found of the pedestrian underpass um, in, its, uh, in its prime. 
You can see uh, from the ladies' dresses and all that this is definitely before 1920. Horses, I'm guessing this might be back around 19. Well, there's an early automobile here. This might be 1910 to 1915. And if you look over here, you can see the pedestrian underpass. And there are globe lights here all along the parkway. And I can't really see the lamp posts at the, um, at the underpass. If you remember, those lamp posts were gone for clearly decades. And when we put them, when we put the lamp posts on that we have, that was sheer speculation as to what they looked like. So this is as good as I can get. And then of course, here's what it was like for so many years. And what we knew is the, the one that's just out of the frame at right had about a 50 year old tree wrapped around it. Uh, when they went to recondition it, so. What well, was we'll that again about the tree wrap? Yeah, there there was a tree that had grown around. Uh, there there's uh, two more. There's two of these on each side. They're both just out of the frame. What are these? This is for the lamppost, and the one that's over here, okay. a tree had completely grown around it. Okay. And they had to remove it. What are those? Been kerosene light lights or? No, they would have been electrical because this is all part, I mean, electricity was available. So um, here's a photo, this is a newspaper photo, but it shows two things. First, you can see the chalet station over here. And this is in about 1950 or so. And then at some point, they moved the old depot over where the current refectory is. And there you can see the corner of it. Here's the, uh, the, the, the tour boat, the Harriet. And, uh, oh, I, um, is this a blow up of that same one? Yeah, this is, a, I blew up, uh, come on. I blew up the same one. Gives you kind of a look. So it doesn't look elevated yet. What doesn't look elevated? The, just beyond the station, the track. Wouldn't oh, no, no, the, this, is, this is from 1950 yeah. or so. Right. Oh, it's the track, it's the, track the, is the, the track, well, you can see the car at street level. The track is at that same level. And so uh, here's just some views of it. This is, um, I got two of them that are the same here. This is 1937. You can see there's a store in that apartment building over there. That car looks a lot older than 1937 though. Hey, hey, Aaron, go back. Look at the, up the right of way uh, on the inbound track uh, on the prior slide, the black and white slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, where, where do you want to be? Uh, the, the, the one showing the Ur Oak Xerxes car at the depot, oh. at the station. Not that one. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Look at the fence going up the right of way there. That's interesting. Oh, how about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah there's the cattle guard, too, that I, I showed oh, you in a previous. Now, the reason I know this is 1937 is Bob Malenbeck took this, and he told me this is 1937. So, uh, well, look at that car. That's much older than 37, isn't it? Oh, sure it is. That's an old Model T or something, mm -hmm. but uh, but the Bob photo is 37. How long was Model T's lasted? And they're still oh, driving forever. Oh yeah, that's about a 1925 car or so. Yeah, but uh, can we put a cattle guard in there where we used to have our little chain fence? <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun explaining to people what it was? Oh, uh, we <laughs> we could do that. Sure, why not? And here's a kind of the same angle uh, in the 50s. And now this is our newspaper photo here. You see the old refectory and here's the little depot. And so this is like 1952 or something like that. And uh, this, uh, this thing finally disappeared sometime thereafter. I don't know when, but it's amazing that it had that long of a life. And this, uh, here's one more shot of it. This came out of a family album that I, I found. 
And I showed you uh, this sequence. This is the last, uh, the last day trip where they're under the canopy. No. Yeah. We, yeah, interesting little uh, uh, curly cues there on the supports for the for the uh, the canopy. Indeed, that's a, that that looks like Bob Schumacher there. Pretty sure it is. And you don't see this north side of it too often. There's Bill Olson. And that's that's Charlie Soulsbach's wife. Charlie Soulsbach was the was really kind of the lead guy in the Minnesota Rail Fans Association, and he was killed over in the um, Milwaukee speed uh, speed rail uh, head-on collision. The the horrible uh, it was a rail fan trip. They had a head-on collision, and a bunch of people were killed. Ooh. And that had happened uh, just oh uh, three four years before this. And, and by the way, for those of you who are who are uh, getting up there, this is what old ladies used to look like. See, <laughs> we're we're much hipper and younger now. <laughs> she's got she's got old lady shoes on and everything, flowered dress. Okay, and an and, umbrella to beat off the mashers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, here's two post abandonment photos. Because the, the tracks went in 54, and my understanding is they took this down in 55. Here's another one. And then I, I'm not quite sure where I got them from, but I, I was looking through some negatives uh, that we had. Because I had assumed before that all these negatives were uh, of photos that I had already seen. And I found this one little envelope, and by gosh, it was pictures of it being taken apart. So you guys haven't seen these. And of course, this is our platform that is still there and our railing that is still there under everything. Look at the pile of rubble there and off on yeah. the side. Seems like that would have been a perfect place to have picnic tables, if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. And is that the last one? That's the last one right there. So there we go. I wonder why they left the platform in there after taking the building down. I am not sure. Good thing they did. because. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Good job.